Now, as someone that travels a lot for work and prides himself in making sure that I've got the right gear with me to help me produce the highest quality content as if I was still in the studio and still carry the essential things that I need with me. Yeah, I was in need of an upgrade when it comes to essentials like my backpack and things like my travel tripod and iFootage came through clutch among some of the brands. So yeah, let's go through pretty much what is my first what's in my tech bag video. Now this what's in my bag video is based around the iFootage Beaver backpack. This is the huge 50 litre model. They've got a 35 litre one and I have to say this 50 litre caught me by surprise by the size of it but actually testing it I was pretty much at my first TPS, that's the photography and video show in Birmingham NEC and this is the one I carried with me and it was a perfect time to actually test it and it came through really clutch and really surprised me. So I'm gonna go through my thoughts and opinion of it and how everything came about. But there are some other products from other brands such as my lighting, the camera that I use, audio gear, that we're pretty much gonna show you when it comes to what's in my bag. But apart from the bag, it's of course their new travel tripod at the time of this recording, which is the Gazelle TC3B Uprise. And this is the carbon fiber one. Obviously you've got the C for carbon fiber. They've got an A model, which is aluminium. And this is pretty much one thing I was in dire need of. So we're gonna go through that. I've done some changes to it and I've got some feedback about this as well. So yeah, we're gonna pretty much go through what's in my travel bag for tech. And just to put it out on record there, I really appreciate iFootage helping, but I've been a long-term iFootage member in terms of using their stuff. So if you look at the tripod I'm using for the A camera here, that is iFootage. I've got my iFootage monopod here as well. So trust me, I've been a long-term iFootage user when it comes to the equipment I use, so it's great to just have a working relationship with them now. So really appreciate them sending this stuff out, but I will give some feedback and my experience of it so far. And amongst other brands as well that we went through, I'm gonna show you what's in my bag. All right, let's not waste much time and get into it. So first is this mahusive giant of a bag here, which is the Beaver 50 liter. Wow. Talk about the bags you told you not to worry about. This is pretty much it. A quick overview. 50 liters in terms of capacity. You've got slips here that you can pack things into. So I've got things like miscellaneous cables, such as my Crow HDMI um, cable in there. You've got that on the left side. You've got straps for support that you can put on and adjust. Great shoulder padding comfort, great pad padding comfort at the back. Hook. On the side here is where you pretty much place your tripod amongst other things. And you've got the locking mechanism here to make sure it's nice and secure. Better feedback is I do wish there was a bit of slack, a bit more slack in terms of room. It does feel a bit tight in certain things, especially if I wanna put another thing here. So you'll be wondering that I've got my light stand. The light stand does fit in there perfectly. And it's kind of hard to make it all the way round. So even if I give it a maximum beans, you know, it's hard to reach around if I want to actually tie both of them together. So that's a bit of feedback that I would love to have a bit more slack and room, especially when it comes to the other side of it. Whereas this side in terms of length is good, but you can fit your travel tripod and the light stand in there, which is one thing I'll be doing in combination. So I'm going to put this on the side. And yeah, we've got their locking mechanism, which is unique to them, so it makes it very anti-theft. You've got the front here. And when you zip this down, you've got two holders. Now, in terms of their product page, this was actually located to actually help you hold things like your sliders or even um, your gimbal, which is really impressive. I think the light stand could probably go in there as well, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, there's enough space for it to go in here. So different combinations of storage that you've got here, which is really, really welcoming in terms of how they've got it set up. So we can zip that away. Bring this back up. Lock this in here nicely. 
nice and easy with the latch and it's adjustable here. So that's a really good look. And of course, what is actually in the bag itself? Let's open it. Zip mechanism at the back as we lay it down. Ooh. And here we have it. What are we working with when it comes to the equipment we have? Let's start with the cameras that we're gonna be shooting with when I'm out on the go. Of course, we've got the Lumix S5X Mark II Blacked Out Baby. This is one of the 6K open gate shooting camera from Panasonic full frame. This, because of the class leading image stabilization, the quality of the image, being able to shoot things like ProRes, record over USB-C, the image stabilization for handheld is really incredible on this camera. Only thing I don't really like too much is the fact that when you shoot 4K60, it does do a mandatory 1.5X crop. I wish it was a non-HQ mode where it did allow you to shoot full frame 4K60. There's a shooting mode that really matters to me, but everything else, man, being able to shoot open gate, 6K, yeah, up to 30 frames a second, 10 bit color, ProRes internal and external. Yeah, this is a beast of a video camera. And we do have their 24 to 70 S series, S Pro zoom lens on here. It's a huge one. But yeah, this one gets you the optical quality and the clarity that you really want and the zoom range, which is pretty much standard. Again, I can't speak enough about this camera. We did a review on the channel, so definitely go check it out. That's the main baby that we take with us. That's the one that we were using for all our B-roll and stuff that we were at the TPS show. Now, this is the Sony ZV-E1. Now, this is a placeholder because the camera that I'm shooting at the top is the Sony A7S III. That is my preferred choice when I'm out and about because it's just a beast. It doesn't overheat. Dual SD card slots, full size HDMI, class leading EVF, I think is 9.44 million dots. But yeah, this doesn't have an EVF. It's compact, single SD card slot. It does have a tendency to overheat, but I've got a solution that I'm gonna show you in terms of what I carry. The internal microphone is good. It does have the new AI chip on there, which is great for things like dynamic active stabilization and the new autofocusing features and then, you know, the auto framing and stuff. Yeah, so I've got this. This is like the third camera body in the Sony range that I've got, but yeah, I prefer to have the fact that the S52X has a fan built in. And this one is nice because it does shoot full frame 4K60 and 4K120 with a 1.5X crop. Um, but yeah, this is basically the A7S III that I'm recording on, but the placeholder is the ZV-E1. So those are the two cameras that I've got. In terms of the lenses, of course, we've got the 50 millimeter F1.4 Sigma. That's the E-mount version. We've also got the 28 to 75 Mark I F2.8 for Tamron on the Sony E-mount. Again, this is quite a beat up lens and it's been about, but yeah, it's one of those where it's the first one I've got with my A7S III body. And of course I'm recording on the 17 to 28 Tamron as well. That's one thing I carry in terms of the ultra wide when I'm vlogging with. And what else we've got? We've got a couple of filters here that we've got ND wise that we use from K and F concept. So just consider what we have here, different sizes. And this is like, you know, the variable NDs. We've got a CPL filter, which is great for cutting out glare in terms of glass. And this is particular one that is the ND and the CPL built into one. Great for when we want to cut out glare and manage exposure when we're doing car content. And then the next one is audio. So we're currently using it right now, just because of the fact that it's so good. This is the Rode Wireless Pro. So we're using it right now. You've got two transmitters and then one receiver. The receiver is on the camera that you're seeing that's recording me right now. And of course I've got it on here. It does internal recording. 32 bit flow audio, which is fantastic. That's the lavalier mic that we're pretty much using when we're at the photography and video show in Birmingham NEC, walking around, vlogging, we're able to sync it up after. And because of the 32 bit, 32 bit, 32 bit flow audio, we're able to recover and have much more dynamic range and control. It's like shooting raw audio like what you do with raw photo and raw video. So it's really good in that flexibility. Again, I got this myself, but I did get a chance to speak to the guys over at Rode at the TPS show. We exchange contacts. Hopefully we will have a working relationship because Rode has been a big part of my journey as a content creator. My first video that I actually ever recorded, the voiceover was on a Rode microphone. I think it was the original NTG1A. So yeah, this is the case with what we have. This has come through very clutch in terms of the videos that we've done. If you go on our car channel, Lover of Cars, we did an interview with some of the most important F1 broadcast personnel, and these microphones came clutch. And again, we've got the backup, which is the Generation 1 Rode Wireless Go. Again, tried and tested. I've had this for ages now, 
and um, it's been for a lot it's been for a lot but I still keep them for sentiment and backup but hopefully we should be getting a second set of the wireless pros because once you get 32 bit flow internal recording the locking labs and everything is really really good to have now my main feedback about the Rode Wireless Go system is the fact that you have to carry two things. So it is taking up double the space compared to other lav systems. And then the wireless lav 2 themselves. So the microphone itself is not a problem, but the replacement lavs are not easy to come by. And in fact, Rode themselves don't actually make replacement lavs. I had to basically go out and buy my own and it was a lot of trial and error in figuring out which ones fit and which ones worked. And I had to get ones with rubber bushings that can fit and hold the microphone in place. So yeah, just another thing to consider that the standard ones, the original ones that come with it, right? They can break off quite easily, which is exactly what happened to us, which was quite unfortunate. So we had to get the vampire clips and I had to get the replacement ones. So again, I wish the footprint was smaller to take up less space and also the replacement lav clips that hold the lavalier two mics together was actually easier to be replaced. Rode, hopefully you do a replacement, but I will have a link in the description below for the ones that I got that helped with the replacement when mine broke. So yeah, just take that into consideration. What else we've got? So we've got everything here in terms of audio. We've got pretty much a sensor blower. You've got to have it. You don't want to touch the sensor, it gets dusty. Um, and then you've got a Movo microphone. I can't remember which model is this. This is the VXR10GY. Wow, I've had this for such a long time that, you know, I can't even remember which one it is. So you have to have a mini shotgun with a windshield on there. That's the main section here. Of course, this part is where it stores the laptop. And of course, my laptop of choice is going to be the M1 Max, I need to upgrade this for sure because my edits that I do, especially when it comes to my camera comparisons and stuff, very intense. This is the 14 inch M1 Max, 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage. And for me, 14 inch, perfect size for travel. Yes, 16 inch is probably better for video editing, but I travel way too often to want to be carrying and lugging around a 16 inch laptop. So just bearing that in mind. So yeah, that goes right there. Laptop of choice out of the way. Let's put this in and get to some of the other parts that I really, really enjoy when it comes to this. Let's get to the top, bam. And what I'm gonna do is press one, bring this down. Big shout out to the guys over at Vernal Space with their standing desk. And again, we've done videos on the desk that they've sent us from before. And I did request for them to send their smallest desk to allow us to do such videos where I'm able to lower it and then give you the ability to see how things are from the top down much easier. I wouldn't be able to do this without them. So I wanted to mention them and say a massive thank you. There will be links in the description below if you wanna get your own standing desk from Vernal. Appreciate them supporting with this. That's how we're able to do such videos. Yeah, so here we are from the top. We've got a couple more things that we wanted to showcase. And this is the one that I wanted to bring through and really show. Bring this to the side here. And this is the small rig RC60B chip on board COB light with a built in battery. Yes, this is pretty much been one of the best things that I've got right now when it comes to portable lighting kit. I had a massive which was portable at the time, falconized flat panel LED light that I had to kind of build together and man, use V-mount battery to power it. It took up a lot of space and it made my luggage so heavy that it got to a point where I almost had to pay excess enough times where I got frustrated. And the innovation of these COB lights that are coming in, really good. Really appreciate Small Rig for sending this out once I reached out to them, the support on here and again, if you consider the stuff that you get with it, I'm going to put this down quickly. Bring this up to level two. Again, this is what's great. If you consider what you get with this, you get a soft box. Let's bring this up some more. You get a carrier case. You get a soft box. That's really easy to use. Opposite ends. Lock it in. 
Easy. Light cover, press it in, and then obviously you can use the mechanism there to unlock it. Really easy to do. And then of course it's USB-C power delivery input as well if you want. There is an eco mode and uh, I'm gonna bring this out. And you can see it's nice and easy. You've got a light stand here that you can use that we can actually put an umbrella slot here if you need to. Yeah, this is really good and I really like it. You turn it on, all you've got to do is pretty much rotate it and there you are. You can change the Kelvin, it is bicolor, the intensity, and it's USB-C power delivery powered as well. So it's got a built-in battery, which I think maximum intensity is about 45 minutes or slightly under as they were saying. But yeah, with the grid on there and the softbox, it's really convenient. I love this package. This has been such a game changer when it comes to space saving and having good lighting, especially when you're using full frame cameras. It's really, really easy to work with. And of course, once you're in there, you're able to pretty much power it over USB-C and have everything that you need. Another thing that we've got is a magic arm. Again, this is something I purchased myself. This is from Small Rig. Um, and this makes it easy to mount this onto the camera or in different places. And I've got the light stand as well. So magic arm with a grip extension at the end really helps with that. So something to consider having. And then of course, my favorite power bank, this is from Charge. So this is the Shargeek 100. Love this, love this. It's got a 93.5 watt hour battery cell in there, which is I think about 2000, what, 26,500 milliamps. And this is airplane certified. You've got two USB-C ports, USB-A port, and the ability to pretty much, let me bring this in closer. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, so DC input and output, two USB-C ports, and that does 100 watts out, which is great. And you know, the lovely thing about this is, this is their Phantom cable, 240 watts that it can actually support. When you put this in here, and let's just say you put it in something like the light. See, it shows you that it's 100 watts that is outputting, right? You can see DC in is 100 watts. And then you've got this LED notification panel screen, right? That actually shows you what the output and all the information is. I love the geeky stuff like this. It's really, really good. So I don't go anywhere without my Charge and um, Charge Geek 100 power bank. It's so clutch in that sense. Able to power my PC, my laptop, I mean, my lights. It's just really convenient. So amongst other little things, let's bring this back up and let's zoom this out. Amongst other things that we've got, let me bring this down again. Loving the standing desk. <laughs> Absolutely loving the standing desk. Of course, a couple of miscellaneous. I've got my Apple AirTag there. You've got to have that. And then this, the Ulanzi fan. A couple of miscellaneous stuff. You've got the MX Anywhere 2S. This is micro USB powered. I need to upgrade this to the USB-C one, which is the generation three. And just a couple of miscellaneous stuff when it comes to adapters, cables, um, white balancing card, of course. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's pretty much what's in my bag. Now this, take it for me, is the fan you need if you have a camera that is prone to overheating, like the Sony ZV-E1. I promise you this will do it. This comes in very clutch. If you slap this at the back of it, I'm gonna show you very quickly, and then we're pretty much gonna wrap this up. And show you the tripod. Here, right here. Spring loaded, goes in. This will stop your camera from overheating. I promise you, it's worked up to 4K60. 4K 120 won't help it. But up to 4K60, there's two fan levels there. And if you USB power it, it's continuous and never shuts off. Great little investment. I think it's about 30 pound, 40 pound. Great for the ZV-1 if you're gonna be using it for intensive stuff as it does have a tendency to overheat. You really wanna guarantee for not overheating, get the S52 or S52X. Those fans built in come in clutch. Right, that's the bag out the way. 
Let's look at the tripod. Let's bring this back up. And this is their Uprising Travel Tripod TC3B. Really, really love this. I was in need of an upgrade. And this is what they have. So again, it comes in with this tripod bag. But there's something that's in there. The handle. Yeah, I'm going to explain. Now, what's great about this is, it's carbon fiber based. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. <laughs> Love understanding this from Vernal, man. It's travel, it's travel tripod based, of course. If you look at it right here, as it's standing, let me raise it up a little bit so you can see it on the A cam as well. There we go. Yeah, you can see it. Whew, nice. Here we have the travel tripod, right? And it's great. I think it's 1,400 millimeters in terms of full height. And the best thing about it for me is the Komodo K3 head. The Komodo K3 head. Oh my goodness. This, so smooth. So smooth. I honestly don't know how they were able to pull off the pan and the tilt being so smooth in such a small head, right? Love it. That's the best part of it. Two things I would highly recommend in terms of if you're investing in this. The handle. Personally, the handle being wedged here, right? I took it off because there's no way for it to fold. I wish there was a way for it to fold away. It constantly is sticking out if it's on and it would block in certain you know, places that I'll be trying to wedge it and keep it. That was me personally. So I took it off and I just put obviously the Allen, um, what do you call it, locks there so that I don't lose them. And I just keep this handle in the bag. So just something to consider. And another thing that they sell is the extension for this because at the maximum extension, my height is somewhere around 185, 183 centimeters or exactly six foot, if it's easier for some people, old metric. This goes up to 140 centimeters, give or take, 1,400 millimeters. So yeah, I've asked iFootage kindly, please do send the extension because when I do want to use this outdoors in full extension mode, it doesn't reach up to my eye level, which is something I really want to do so that I'm able to fully maximize it. But in terms of a travel tripod, the Komodo K3 head is amazing. My quick releases that I'm using are the free to free quick release plates because it does have the safety pin so when it locks it's nice and safe but yeah apart from that i highly recommend you invest in a carbon fiber travel tripod when you're traveling as often as i am carbon fiber is the way less weight and it's so safe and secure and strong and light enough where even my camera comparison rig for my smartphones that i use I actually put it in here now because it's so easy and light to hold and I can really extend it, especially when you see me do my two-way, three-way, and when I get crazy, four-way smartphone camera comparison, I really need to stretch it out when I'm doing the selfie so that it can really capture everything in frame. And this tripod helps amongst other things. So yes, that's what is in my tech and camera bag for 2024. But a few things that I got from the kind folks at Lumix when it came to the TPS show that I wanted to show. It was really, really nice. Custom Panasonic Lumix mug. Thank you so much for this. This is so nice. I'm enjoying my cup of teas and hot chocolate in here. But then they've got a branded Lumix Pro Peak Design slide light strap. And you know Peak Design straps are not cheap. But this is branded, so definitely, this is what I'm gonna be hooking up to my S52X, blacked out with it, with the red accents, of course, really appreciate them. And you know the best part? Lens cloth, yes. <laughs> this is the best part, the lens cloth. I was using lens tissues and I was also using the lens liquid. It was tedious and it wasn't reusable. This is probably the funniest and the best thing I've got from there. So I really appreciate this, man. I really enjoyed the TPS show, the photography and video show for 2024. We're going to make it a yearly thing. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it that much, but I really did. And it came in clutch to be able to test and showcase what's in our travel bag and also tech and camera. So yeah, really appreciate the support from all the brands that have jumped on here. Mainly the kind folks over at iFootage for supplying the Beaver backpack 50 liter. Again, 
I think I might need a 35 litre. What do you say? <laughs> and then the Travel Trapper, which is the TC3B. Really appreciate that as well. Hopefully get the extension for the center column so I can really maximize it. Small rig for supplying the RC60B. Trust me, the amount of space that you saved in my luggage for still giving me good lighting. And of course, the microphones that we're using, although invested in ourselves, Road man, we've been powered by road for ages. Hopefully we can get a working relationship there as well. And amongst all the others, if you're interested in any of them, please do let me know in the comment section below. And also check the description that will be there. And a big shout out to the guys over at Vernal Desk to also supplying their standing desk. It's really made it a lot easier and a lot more fun doing this type of video. Again, I'll catch you in the next one. Ben from Lover of Tech. Subscribe for more videos like this and play some more tech and all things productions related on here. Peace. Thank you.